Today's lesson is exponential functions. So in your journey of mathematics, in eighth grade math, you really start to learn about functions and then you learn about linear functions. We have reviewed linear functions. We've talked about quadratic functions, make the parabolas. And here's another function family, exponential functions. You do learn about exponential functions in algebra one. So this might be a bit of a review for you in our lesson today. Exponential functions is any function in the form of y equals a times b raised to the x. And notice our x exponent there. So our input variable is our exponent in an exponential function. And the rest of the definition here says as a and b are constants. Recall that changing the parameters of our parent function produces transformations in its graph. So we worked with our function transformations earlier in the year. They are still holding true here. Let's start with our coefficient a. When it is negative, it causes a reflection over that x-axis. Also, it causes a vertical compression or stretch. When a is greater than one, it causes a vertical stretch. And when a is less than one, it causes a vertical compression. So that's a. B is gonna be the base of our exponential function showing our growth or our decay, um, x being our exponent, what about that minus H that causes our shift from side to side? It's gonna cause us to go left if it was adding H, gonna go right if it is subtracting. Remember that goes backwards from what we would expect. And then lastly, our K value here moves us up or down. So let's look at two examples below. I've got A and B on A we have y equals two raised to the x plus three plus two. I do have our parent function here graphed. That is this guy here is gonna be our parent function. And our parent function here is gonna be y equals two x. Two is gonna be our base showing our growth, x serving as our exponent. So what are our transformations here? We do have that plus three and that is moving us towards the left. And then this plus two is going to make us move up. So let's look some, at some points on our parent function. We have zero, one, we have two, four, and we have three, eight as some of our original points on our parent function. So after these transformations, we are going left three, one, two, three, up to, you can see that transformation there. Same on this next ordered pair, one, two, three, up two. And on our last one, one, two, three, up two hits there at zero, 10. Reviewing again with B, Y equals two raised to the negative X minus four. That negative um, in your exponent is as if you had a negative on the inside. We didn't review this above, but if you have a negative on the inside, reflects it across the Y, axis. Because of that negative there, and then we have the minus four at the end shifts us down. So I used the same parent function here, y equals two raised to the x. So we have those same ordered pairs on our parent function. Okay, let's talk about that transformation. So it got reflected over the y-axis as you look at that zero one, reflecting it over the y-axis, we're still sitting there and then we are shifted down four. On the next one, if I reflect it across the y-axis, I end up here and then down one, two, three, four. And then this third one, let's reflect it over the y-axis three places each side and then down one, two, three, four. So you can see those reflections there. So we're definitely gonna practice and review our transformations even with our exponential functions. In this next section, we're gonna look at some specific features of exponential functions. Um, on Delta Math, this is a fill in the blank drop down list. I have left some of these for you filled in. 
Let's look at number one, f of x equals negative two times two raised to the x plus four. The function f of x is an exponential function, that is gonna be your first drop down, with a horizontal asymptote of y equals, and you're gonna fill in a number here. Okay, so first let's talk about this vocabulary of a horizontal, what is an asymptote? An asymptote is an invisible boundary line on our function. And in exponential functions, they are horizontal. And so you can see that is where it is leveled off in our graph here. This is our asymptote. And it is at y equals four, creating that horizontal line. So you would fill in a number there for that horizontal asymptote in your delta math dropdown boxes. Filling in the rest of the um, information here, the range, recall that's our, our y values. How low does this graph go? Look at that arrow that's going down forever. And then how high does it go? We are topping off there at four. So the range of the function is from negative infinity all the way down to four. And I'm using a parentheses there because we are not actually going to ever hit four. We're going to get very, very close to it, um, but not using a bracket, not closed on four, just approaching four. It is increasing or decreasing. So when you're um, trying to decide increasing or decreasing, we're always reading our functions from left to right. So as I go from left to right, it's falling, it's decreasing. On the domain of, and remember domain is our X values. Now I've put this one on our notes filled in because this is always, always, always true. If it's exponential, the domain will always be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Look at our graph, left arrow, shooting out towards negative infinity forever. And then our right arrow, it is ever so slightly creeping out towards the right forever. Little bitty, but if I had infinity time, it would eventually go to positive infinity on the X axis as well. So if it's exponential, your domain will always be all real numbers. So you can write that as negative infinity to positive infinity. The in behavior on the left side. So again, looking at my left arrow as it is going towards the left, towards negative infinity, its Y value is approaching four. We're leveling off at four. The in behavior on the right side, switch my circles here. We're looking at our right arrow as X approaches infinity towards the right, it is going where? It is going down towards negative infinity. Okay. So again, I left some of these filled in because they are going to always, always, always be true for this lesson, for this assignment. We will always have exponential functions. I've told Delta Math to only give you exponential functions. Exponential functions always have a horizontal asymptote. And in order to produce that horizontal equation, it's always y equals, okay? So you will have different values there, but it'll always start with y equals. The domain of exponentials is always all real numbers. And then even this last part, the in behavior, if we're talking about the left side, we're always going to say x is negative infinity and right side x is positive infinity. Everything else there would need a little adjustment to double check, but more than half of those boxes on this problem are going to be the same every time because we're talking about exponential functions. Let's try again with number two. We have f of x equals one third x minus two. The function of f of x is exponential. Now it looks a little different, right? What's happened? It's just been flipped. So usually our exponential functions have this rocket ship from left to right. This one has just been reflected over the y-axis. It's still an exponential function with a horizontal asymptote. I can see that it is leveling off, flattening out there at negative two. So that equation is gonna be y equals negative two. The range of the function, so how low does it go? It is leveling off down there, low at negative two. And how high is it going? All the way up to infinity. Negative two to infinity is its range. And it is increasing or decreasing. Look at it from left to right, it is falling or decreasing on the domain x-axis. 
How far left does it go? That left arrow is inching out ever so slightly to the left forever. And obviously the right one is shooting out to the right. But we've talked about this one is the same for every exponential function and domain is all real numbers, negative infinity, positive infinity. The end behavior on the left side is going to be x approaches negative infinity. As we look at that left arrow, it's going to the left. And what about the y's? It is going up, 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 up to infinity. The end behavior on the right side, our right arrow, as x approaches positive infinity, the y is going where? It is flattening out. It is approaching that negative 2. It's not going to go down to negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. It's flattening out. So y is approaching negative 2. All right, let's talk about page two, which might actually be the review that you know from Algebra 1. Exponential growth and decay functions model those quantities of increase or decrease by a fixed percent during each time period. Given the initial amount A and a rate of increase or decrease R, the amount a of t after t time periods is given by our functions below. So those are your variables there. A is your initial amount. R is going to be your rate of increase, decrease. T is in time. So for exponential growth, A of t equals A times the quantity 1 plus R raised to the t, where 1 plus R is our growth factor. I've seen that vocabulary used in some of your benchmark questions lately. So the, in the parentheses there, that is a factor. It's multiplying with A, and then it is showing growth. For exponential decay on the other side, same thing, except 1 minus R, because it is decaying, and 1 minus R is our decay factor. So when we're showing growth, we're adding. When we're decaying, we're subtracting. Um, and I'll illustrate that more in our examples below. So given the following exponential function, identify whether the change represents growth or decay and determine the percent rate of increase or decrease. In number one, we have y equals 65 times 1.25x. Is this growth or decay? That's our first question. Because that growth factor is greater than one, this is growth. So by how much? Now, in our exponential growth function, it's 1 plus that rate. So let's do 1.25, our rate, minus 1 will reveal the mysterious 0 0.25, or this is a growth of 25%. Recall, decimal form to percent form, you scoot your decimal two places to the right because we multiply by 100 there. So this is a growth of 25% being illustrated in number one. Number two, y equals 38 times 1.108 raised to the x. Again, I'm looking in those parentheses. They are greater than one. Therefore, this is a growth. Let's see by how much. Subtract it away from one, and we find that we have um, 0 0.108. Scooting my decimal twice, how much? 10.8% growth over time. Number three, y equals 42 times 0 0.92 raised to the x. In our parentheses there, that is less than one, so it is decaying. We are losing value over time because it's not maintaining 100% as we move in time, whether it's per year or per month. It's not 100%, it's only 92%. So let's see here, we have one minus 0 0.92. When you subtract that, we're gonna get 0 0.08 or 8%. This is decaying by 8% each year, each month, whatever the, the time period is there. Number four, y equals 8,200 times 9,600. It's raised to the x. Again, in our parentheses, they're less than one. So this is a decay um, exponential function. By how much? One minus 0 0.96 is going to give us four hundredths. Four hundredths is four percent. It is decaying by four um, percent each day, week, month, year. Um, it's an um, exponential decay by 4%. Sometimes those just take a lot of practice for students to get the hang of, but just notice I've subtracted one away if it was bigger or a growth, and I subtracted it from one if it was decay or less than one to reveal that um, percentage rate. And of course, we've got to put it into context. So number five, a new car is purchased for $16,400. The value of the car depreciates by 8.25% per year. 
what will be the value of the car to the nearest cent after 10 years? So the word depreciates. I hope your other teachers in personal finance talk about the word depreciates. But if not, let's talk about that vocabulary. It means it's losing value. You buy a new car, brand new car off the lot. Over time, it's not worth so much. Okay, so we are losing money, losing value of our car, 8.25% per, per year. And we're going to find out after 10 years, rounded to the nearest cent in money, nearest cent is two decimal places. So, all right, so our exponential function, let's start off with A of T equals A times, is it growth or decay? We said this was decay, so let's have one minus our rate raised to our time and fill in what we know. A is our initial value. We purchased for $16,400. One minus, because we already decided this is decay. Our rate was 8.25%. In our function, we're always going to put it in terms of decimal form. So that's 0 0.0825 raised to the time, 10 years. All right, so we've got A of... 10, I'll use function notation here. Um, and let's simplify this. Let's grab the calculator. All right, we had $16,400, one minus 0.0825, closing my parentheses, raising that to the 10 for 10 years. Enter, looks like $6,932.734, and we're going to have to round it to the nearest cent. Seven, three, four, and it kept going. Now, nearest cent is going to be hundreds places two. So that means we're going to look at the four. Four says let it rest. So we're going to say final answer $6,932.73 will be the value of our car after 10 years um, run to the nearest cent. Number six, $2,200 is placed in an account with annual interest rate of 7.25%. How much will be in the account after 29 years raised to the nearest cent or <laughs> to the nearest cent? So doesn't really talk about growth or decay, but we are always going to assume if we are putting money in an account and it should be growing with an interest rate, it should be growing. Okay, so this is an example of a growth. Let's set up our function here. A of T equals A times 1 plus our rate raised to the time because we're going to grow our little account starting with $2,200 times our growth factor one plus our rate was 7.25%. Write it as a decimal raised to the time after 29 years. So A of 29 using function notation there. What is our account worth? Let's grab our calculator. We had 2,200 times 1 plus 0 0.0725, closing up my parentheses, raised to the 29th, enter 16,747.2847, da, 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 rounded to the nearest cent. Again, that's two decimal places. The four says let it rest. So final answer, we should have $16,747.2847. 28 cents in our account after 29 years. A lot of students talk to me and they're like, this is so dumb. I just let it sit there for 29 years, Miss Brian, and that's all I get. You let it sit there. You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to go to work every day. You didn't have to check in on it. You just let it sit there for 29 years and you started off with $2,000 and I have $16,000. So take it or leave it, but it just grew a lot eight times. Number seven, we've got a group of aggressive zombies. Triples every hour. Find the number of zombies after seven hours. I love that. Delta Math has these questions. Um, I just think it is so fun. Um, starting with our exponential function. Is it growth or decay? Aggressively growing. Yes. One plus R raised to the T. I started with 23 zombies very early on breakout of zombies one plus how much what's our growth here well we are tripling so our growth factor is three so actually i want to set this up a little bit differently we're just going to put in a three for that whole growth factor piece raised to our time 
is seven in hours. So um, they told us it is growing every hour, it's tripling every hour, and we're going to find in hours. Okay, so no major changes, nothing crazy here. Um, it's just in terms of hours. So we started with 23, we're tripling. So our growth factor is three. Let's grab the calculator. 23 zombies times three raised to the seven for seven hours. This is, this is dangerous. We have 50,000 zombies, 50,301 zombies in seven hours. Okay. This is a major like world ending event for sure. Um, but there we go. We didn't have to round it because it's whole number of zombies. No, just at legs and arms. It's whole number <laughs> entire zombies. Number eight element with a mass of 590 grams decays by 19.5% per minute. How much of the elements remaining after 15 minutes? All right. Started off with 590. We are decaying by 19.5%. Change that to a decimal. It is per minute. Finding out in minutes after 15 minutes. So let's see. Ooh, I just realized over here, I put A of 20. Three, it was A of seven after seven hours. Okay, coming back over here, A of 15. And let's throw it in our calculator. All right, 590 grams times one minus 0. Point, the 19.5%. They're written as a decimal raise to the 15th. After 15 minutes, we have 22.792408, rounding to the nearest 10th. The tenths place is one decimal place. So that we're looking at the seven. The nine tells us how to round. After 15 minutes, there should be minutes. Wow. After 15 minutes, there should be 22.8 grams left of this element. There you are, friends. Exponential functions. Again, touched on in Algebra 1, so it might feel a little familiar. I hope it does. We've talked about transformations before. So they still work here with our exponential functions. We looked at the features of exponential functions. Um, you are only working on exponentials right now. They have a horizontal asymptote That is the invisible boundary line where they're leveling off. Um, domain, range, increasing, decreasing. We've done that before. And we've also done in behavior before. So there's a lot of just review elements right there in that um, fun the features of exponential functions. Growth and decay identifying the percentage, whether it's growth or decay, covered in Algebra 1. So I hope that feels like review and then applying it into our context, plugging in that initial, whether it's growth or decay to add or subtract there, plugging in our rate as a decimal, um, and then our time and just using our calculator and rounding carefully. Okay. Um, let me know if you have any questions, guys, and I'll see you in class. Have a great day.